China has successfully landed a spacecraft on the moon in the latest stage of its ambitious space program. The last lunar landing was nearly 40 years ago. China's become only the third country after the United States and then the former Soviet Union to send a craft to land on and explore the moon. Damien Grammaticus is in Beijing for us. In in fact, we are not going to go to uh, Damien Grammaticus. We are going to speak to Dr. David Whitehouse, uh, the space uh, scientist. Uh, so this was done back in the, the 70s, I, I suppose. Is it that much uh, of, of, of a, an engineering feat? Yes, it is. It's not easy to land on the surface of another world. And when the United States and the former Soviet Union did it, they had many attempts before they succeeded. So to achieve it first time with uh, much more sophisticated technology, with much less effort and much less drama, is a remarkable achievement for the Chinese space effort. So I think there's a, there's a rover on board as well, uh, which again feels very uh, reminiscent of, of those 70s and 80s uh, space exploration. Can they get that craft back then? No, not this time. It's the first of several rovers from several different countries that will arrive at the moon over the next few years. But sometime tomorrow, this small rover, which is only the size of, um, of um, a, a, a skateboard, is, is going to move out onto the lunar surface, take photographs, and uh, do a little bit of exploring. And so this is the way to learn how to land on the moon. China's got a, an interesting lunar exploration program. Two satellites orbited the moon. This lander, in a few years' time, they want to return a sample of the moon. And if you put that alongside China's manned space program, 10 years ago they launched their first astronaut, and every manned mission since then has been in a considerable step on the previous one, and now they can launch many astronauts into space and have craft that are docking. You put that soft landing on the moon, docking astronauts together, and it's clear to see that in about 10 years' time, with some more training missions, that uh, China may be well in a position to land a man on the moon. So uh, how would you describe China's uh, space aspirations? Well, they see space as part of their ticket, part of their admission to the League of Great Nations. They feel that this century is going to be important for them. They're going to be a major superpower, if not the major superpower. And they feel if they don't have a manned space program and an unmanned program to explore the planets, they are not really a member of the great club, if, as it were. They feel they must have a space program for national prestige. But they also, they also see how useful it is for their economy, because when you spend money on space, you don't take it up into orbit and watch it float away. You spend it in the economy. You spend it on developing advanced technology, the skills to use that, the skills to manage that. And these people take those skills into other areas of their economy, and it inspires youngsters to go into science and technology. So they're using their space program for many different reasons, and very wisely. And uh, uh, what about the, the resources on the moon, potentially? I mean, is that something they could, they could mine and, uh, and use just in terms of their energy needs? Well, certainly the moon contains a lot of useful minerals and resources. Um, this is not something that's going to happen in the next 10 or 20 years. But once we get fusion nuclear reactors, which are nuclear reactors that uh, push atoms together rather than relying on radioactive materials, um, there is in the lunar soil a substance called helium-3. There's not much of it there. And if you dredge the soil, you'd have to dredge a lot of the soil to, uh, to get helium-3 out. But this is a very efficient nuclear fuel. So I'm certainly, this is not a driver for their current activities. The driver of their current activities is to, is to beat the Americans back to the moon. But certainly they have in the back of their mind that in years to come, should they be able to stay on the moon, um, this is something that might prove to be useful and economically valuable. Fascinating. David De Whitehouse, thank you very much, Stephen.